Hi, my name is Yves Zimmermann. In the next few minutes, I would like to give you a brief summary about their publication, ENIEXO, a versatile and dynamic upper limb rehabilitation robot. I will explain the motivation behind building this robot and give you a brief insight into the methods used to develop the kinematics, hardware and software. There are different causes for an impairment of the central nervous system. Some examples are traumatic brain injury, stroke and spinal cord injury. Stroke, for example, has a fairly large incidence rate in Europe. In 2006, there were approximately 1.1 million incidences, while in 2025, about 1.5 million are expected. About a two-third of the stroke survivors are left with a paresis of the upper limb. For many patients, it's possible to at least partially recover their ability to use their limbs. This is done by inducing the so-called plasticity of the brain. This works actually quite similar to a regular learning process. The healthy parts of the brain or the spinal cord learn to perform the function of the damaged part. In rehabilitation therapy, functional movements are trained repeatedly to induce this learning process. During the last decades, robots were more and more used to support occupational and physical therapy. However, currently available robots limit the full recovery of patients. Therefore, they are currently mostly only used for severely affected patients. With the newly developed robots, we want to tackle this issue. To make robot assistance applicable for all phases of therapy, we strive to match the abilities of the human arm. We want to allow for highly dynamic movements while the assistive forces can be controlled accurately. This robot should also be applicable for patients who already recovered their speed, hence regular movement speeds of healthy humans should be supported. To make the robot applicable for as many therapy scenarios as possible, we aim for a range of motion that allows to train all relevant activities of daily living. We also set an emphasis on movements close to the body. In conventional rehabilitation, therapists are using their own arms to assist the patient, uh, they can do this in a very intuitive manner and adapt quickly to new requirements. To make rehabilitation robots easy to use, we strive for a method that allows to intuitively program complex tasks. To achieve a large range of motion, the kinematics of the shoulder complex have to be reproduced as accurately as possible with the exoskeleton. We designed the exoskeleton with two degrees of freedom at the shoulder girdle, three degrees of freedom at the glenohumeral joint and an elbow flexion and extension joint. Wrist and hand degrees of freedom are currently under development and will be published in the near future. Additionally, there are three passive prismatic degrees of freedom that allow to adjust the robot to the size of the human. The kinematics of the glenohumeral joint were optimized for the designed range of motion as well as for maximum manipulability. Manipulability of the upper arm orientation is a scalar metric that describes how easy the upper arm can be moved by the actuators of the robot. Hence, a high manipulability allows to control the interaction forces between the human and the robot with high accuracy. More detailed information on the complex design choices for the kinematics can be found in our publication. In this video, we can see a demonstration of the range of motion of the exoskeleton. Here, I'm not wearing a handle to demonstrate what kind of interactions or trainings we could do when having a very lean designed wrist module. So I could show that we can reach both legs, the head, both shoulders, and even reach in our pockets. And here, I'll demonstrate that it's even possible to scratch the back. A similar range of motion, or the same range of motion, is also possible with uh, having the handle attached. Here I'm also demonstrating the range of motion a bit more far away from the uh, torso and the head of the person. Now, in the publication itself, we give a much more in-depth analysis of the achieved manipulability and range of motion of this uh, kinematics and also compare it with the results from other devices from related work. For the actuation of the robot's joints, we decided to use modular series elastic actuation. These actuators provide a high accuracy in torque control 
as well as good robustness against disturbances. Particularly, we decided to use the any drives, which are developed by the company Anibotics, as they match well our requirements in torque and speed. There is even an alternative version available, which can be mounted on the device if more torque is required. In this video, I'm demonstrating the benefits of having accurate torque control at the joints. Here, the robot's gravitation and nonlinear turns are compensated over a model-based controller. The robot floats in the air, while uh, when I touch it, I can really lightly move it around. Now, by adding a small disturbance of 39 grams to the robot, we uh, make an error to the model of the robot's gravitation. So we can see that the robot arm immediately falls down. And here again, when removing the mass, the robot is again floating in the air. A further trick to make our lives a bit easier in controlling the interaction forces accurately is to design the robot in a lightweight way. By using an aluminum and carbon fiber reinforced plastic structure, we achieve the moving mass ratio of lower than 13 kilograms. When we want to compare this to other robots, it's the best to compare the power to moving mass ratio. So compared to the previous uh, rehabilitation robot in our lab, we achieved an about four times higher power to moving mass ratio, which promises a much more performing behavior in dynamic movements. As we now have a look at the hardware design, the question remains is how to program this robot such that it is intuitively usable for therapy. If you look at the typical therapy scenario, then there are a lot of equality tasks, as for example, hand position tracking or uh, assistive forces. But there are also a lot of inequality tasks, as for example, uh, passive range of motion limits or collision avoidance, as well as some exception handlings, example for uh, singularities. Now, the question arises is how should the robot prioritize all these different tasks while it still remains intuitive to program the robot? Now, we suggest to use the so called hierarchical optimization, which is often used in light robotics, because this allows to define the different tasks at a certain priority P as equality constraints or inequality constraints. And the hierarchical optimization always assures that a task of a higher priority is never hampered by a task of a lower priority. An example of how we use this hierarchical optimization is shown in this slide here. So we use the first two priorities to set the physical properties of the device. The third priority is used to set the safety constraints, as for example, a passive range of motion of the human, and the fourth and further priorities are used for therapy tasks, as for example, hand position tracking or interaction force rendering. The last priority is always used for regularization, such that the behavior of the robot is always fully defined. In the following video, I'm going to demonstrate how this works for an easy example of just setting uh, safety constraints for collision avoidance and else having no tasks such that the robot can be freely moved in a transparent way. In this video, we demonstrate that we can freely move in the robot as long as the actuator is far away from the head. However, there is an inequality constraint set in position in the task space that prevents the actuator to come too close to my head and cause a collision. We did further experiments to investigate the transparency of the robot when using a model-based feedforward controller that compensates for the gravitation and nonlinear terms of the robot. Now here in this video we did uh, different disturbances on the elbow with approximately the same amplitude but on different frequencies. And what is very interesting to observe here is the green plot that shows the maximum torque amplitude. As we can see is that the maximum torque amplitude that is felt by the human is approximately the same up until uh, one hertz and is also quite low. And after that, it increases a bit up to two hertz. However, it's still uh, in a very low range such that it, the robot can feel very transparent still. 
And at 2 Hertz of for disturbance, we even achieved velocities of 11 radians per second. So we could fully use the speed of the actuators. In this video, we are demonstrating the transparency of the robot during multi-degree of freedom movement. As you can see, it's possible to freely move in the robot while the device follows this movement. For this demonstration, we are using a feed-forward controller. This means that we are not using the information from the 6 degree of freedom interaction force sensors at the interaction point. However, in future, we plan to use this information to even further improve the transparency of the robot. This robot was developed in collaboration by the Robotic Systems Lab and the Sensory Motor System Lab. At this point, we would also like to thank the startups, clinics and other experts who helped us with the development.